pech ook is, vandag is dit dan die uh, mei juni vraagstel van 2019, kom ons kyk gegoop hier daarna, jylle moet weer eens afdeling A en afdeling B doen, um, section A en section B. Goed, nou die tekst, um, het twee titels, ons sal later kom daarby wat die laaste vraag, was goedhartige sakemans, ken kunstbeen, uh, van bedel vir geld tot comrades held, um, en dan was die hele tekst basis gewees oor een man genaamd uh, Olani Levuno. Um, goed, so die eerste vraag dan oor Lulani se lewe was, hoe oud was hy to hierdie artikel oor hom geskryf? So what age was he? Hy was 34 jaar oud weer eens, hy was en jaar oud is in hakkies, so dit is onnodig om dit te skryf, as jy net 34 geskryf het, jy kan het ook in woorde uitgeskryf het 34, dit is 100%, but just make sure if you write it out in words, uh, uh, 34, that you spell it correctly. Waar het Zulani gewoon, voordat hy Pretoria toe is, hy het gewoon in Oost-London, ok, gain in is unnecessary. Nummer 3, hoe het hy geld in die hande gekryd terwyl hy op straat was? So while he was living on the street, how did this man make money? Hy het gebedel, hy het gesteel, mense beroof of by huise ingebreek. So he was begging, he stole, he um, hijacked, or not hijacked, um, he was a thief basically, so he stole things from people, uh, pickpocketed, those kinds of things. Um, and he also broke into people's houses, ok, enige een of soort gelijk, any one or similar to the above. Then, nummer 4, Jolani het s'nachts gemakkelijk geslaap, toe hy nog in Sunnyside was, so at night, in Sunnyside, he slept comfortably. Haal een sin uit paragraaf 1 aan, om hierdie stelling onwaar te maak. Quote one sentence from paragraph one that makes this statement false. Now, as you can see, this is quite a long sentence that you needed to quote. All right. So they've put the first half of the sentence, actually three quarters of the sentence rather, in brackets, which means you can write the whole thing. But the most important part of this sentence is onder a brug. Geslaap. So if you have the sentence onder a brug geslaap, that is perfectly fine. The main reason why they did this is because of this lovely little word N. Okay? So because of the word N, we know that this is a compound sentence, a um, gecombineerde sin, a woord, sin met a voeg woord in, en daarom het hulle besluit om net die tweede helft te aanvaar. So therefore, they accepted a uh, only, um, or they said that we can only accept the second half of the sentence as fine. Okay, good. Um, the aanhaling, however, must be correct. Okay, so if you leave any part of that sentence out, it is not correct. Uh, remember in class we spoke about the dot dot dots, ne? So you can rewrite the sentence dot 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 en s'nachts het hy onder a brug geslaap. That is perfect, you can do that as well. Okay, but only for a sentence like this where there's a compound word, or a, 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 a conjunction in your sentence. Alright, so please just remember that. Good, number five. Tulani uh, het op a stadium five jaar tronkstraf uitgedien. So, at a stage, he served five years in jail. Kies die correcte antwoord. Choose the correct answer. Dit was rechtvaardig of onrechtvaardig that Lulani die tronkstraf moes uitdien. So it was fair or unfair that he had to go to jail. Obviously, he stole from people, um, he broke into houses, so it's rechtvaardig. Ne? He took things that did not belong to him, and therefore he had to be punished. Motiveer jou antwoord met a feit 
AD Leerstuk. So now you need to motivate, but you are not just motivating because, oh, shame, you know, there was reasons why he stole, poor baby, ne? No, you have to make sure that the fact that you give comes from the passage. And in the passage it says, hy het mense op straat beroof, of hy het by mense sy huise ingebreek, of hy het gesteel. Anything similar to the above, as long as it comes from the reading passage. Okay, then, nummer 6. Gee twee redes waarom die ontmoeting met Hein Venter um, die begin van een nieuwe lewe vir Tulani was. Say or give two reasons why the meeting with Hein Venter was the beginning of new, a new life for Tulani. So first of all, Tulani had work gekry. So he got a job. Hy had a kind's been gekry. He got an artificial leg. Dis by Hein's bezigheid waar die hardloop gocha vir Tulani gebuit het. So it was at Hein's um, business where this running bug bit him. In other words, he started being interested in running. Hein het om gehelp om dwellings en drank te los. So Hein helped him to get clean of drugs and alcohol. Of hy het om gehelp om dwellings vry of sonder drank te leef. He helped him to be um, drug free or live without alcohol. Hy is actief by die kerk betrokke. Again, actief, you can leave that out. You can just say, hy was by die kerk betrokke. Either one is acceptable. En hy lever motiverings praakies. He is a motivational speaker as well. <coughs> Enige twee of soortgelijk aan die boog genoemde, so any two or similar to the above mentioned. Um, it says, en dan kan ek daar te omvattende afleiding maak, byvoorbeeld dat hy in Tulani se lewe verbeter het, is dit slechts een punt werk. So if you just mention an umbrella term basically, saying something like, Hein made sure that Tulani had a better life, you will only receive one mark for that, because they're asking two specific reasons. So yes, Hein did help to make Tulani's life better, but how did he do that? You need to mention the how instead of just the what. Alright, then, number seven, Nummer 7, wat bedoel Hein as hy sê Lulani se verlede nie sy toekomst bepaal nie? What does it mean when Hein says Lulani's past does not determine his future? Dit beteken, die verkeerde dinge wat Lulani in sy lewe of in sy verlede gedoen het, beteken nie dat hy geen toekomst kan heen nie of nie een sukses in sy toekomst kan behaal nie. So it means that the wrong things that he did in his past does not mean that he does now not have a future or cannot still be a success or make a success of his future. Or you can say, dat Lulani vandag of nou met sy lewe doen, belangriker is as wat hy in die verlede gedoen het. That which Lulani is doing with his life now or today is more important than what he has done in the past. It says in the brackets here, the implication ten opzichte van die verlede is daar. So the implication um, regarding the past must be there. Now, anything that tells us that the past does not define you. Die verlede maak jy nie wie jy is nie, of jy verlede kan nie sê wie jy in die toekomst gaan wees nie, that is fine. But in this question, you need to be extremely careful. Because um, in paragraph 4, it says specifically, jou verlede bepaal nie jou toekomst nie. So if you just write it directly from the passage as is, we cannot give you the mark. Because the question specifically says, wat bedoel hy daarmee? What does he mean by that? Which means we need an explanation of the answer. Okay? So die kandidaat moet in die antwoord na die verlede en die toekomst verbuis of al by impliseer. So the candidate must in the answer refer to the past and the future or the, um, imply both in the answer. Alright, like, the, um, like this one over here did. Good. Then number 8, you have to read paragraphs 4 and 5 again. 
Now it says, who verskil Hein en Lulani oor die rol wat Hein en Lulani se lewe gespeel het? So how is the um, opinions of Hein en Lulani different about the roles that each played in the other's life? So, again, there are two people, which means we need two opinions. So the first one will be Hein se... Hy kan geen krediet neem vir die feit dat Lulani sy leven omgedraai het of verander het nie. Of hy en sê dit is Lulani sel wat sy leven omgedraai of verander het. Hy en sê nou weer, um, sorry, Lulani sê nou weer, hy en moet al die eer vir die verandering in sy leven kry of Lulani sê hy en is sy alles. So hy en sê that he can take no credit for Lulani turning his life around or changing his life. Hein also says that Lulani is the one that turned his own life around or changed his own life, whereas Lulani on the other hand says Hein has to get all the credit for him changing his life, or, Hein, or Lulani says that Hein is his everything. In other words, without Hein, he would not be able to do it. So anything similar to that is fine, as long as you have both viewpoints, one viewpoint from Hein and one viewpoint from Lulani, that's okay. Then, number nine. Um, waarom denk jy is Lani a motivering spreker wat a mens kan gloe? Why do you think he is a motivational speaker that people can believe in or that people can believe or that people can see as credible? Zulani het sy leer of het self die pad van verandering geloop, so he himself walked this path of change, en daarom is hy a levende voorbeeld vir ander, because of that he is a living example for others. Zulani praat uit ondervinding, he talks of, out of experience, so he has experienced that which he is speaking about, changing one's life. Lulani het sy eie lewe as bedelaar en misdadiger positief verander, so he changed his own life as beggar and criminal for the positive. En Lulani het gewys dat die mense verlede nie jou toekomst bepaal nie. So Lulani showed here that a person's past does not determine his or her future. Then, number 10, number 10, wat beteken dit as ons sê dat Lulani geschiedenis gemaakt het? toe hy die 2018 Comrades Marathon op krukke met een been voltooi het. What does it mean if we say Lulani made history when he uh, finished the Comrades Marathon in 2018 on crutches? Lulani was die eerste persoon om die Comrades Marathon op krukke te voltooi of aan te durf het, of niemand anders het al die Comrades op krukke met een been voltooi nie. Anything that tells us he was the first person or there has been no one else that is perfect. Goed, dan kom ons by nummer 11. Nou, nummer 11 is kolom A, kolom B vraag gewees. So, 1.1, oh, sorry, it says, Lulani het sy hardlooperij goed beplan. So, Lulani planned his running well. Now it says, hy het die 5 km aan um, gedraf. So, 11.1, hy het die 5 km gedraf, he um, jogged the 5 km, that goes with number C, Morsia, dit was die afstand wat hy aan die begin gehaardlip het. It was the distance he ran in the beginning, that's where he started, in other words. Hy het die 21 km gehaardlip, then he ran the 21 kilometers. That one goes with number A. The Sunbird Striders Club het gedink hy was nie, hy was ernstig toe hy hierdie, sorry. The Sunbird Striders Club het nie gedink hy was ernstig toe hy hierdie afstand wou hardloop nie. So the Sunbird Striders Club did not think that he was serious when he wanted to run this distance. Then 11.3, 11.3, hy het 42 km gehardlip. He then ran 42 km, dis nummer E. Hy het sy tyd oor hierdie afstand mooi verbeter. He managed to improve his time over this distance. En dan nummer 4, hy het die 2018 Comrades Marathon voltooi. 
Nadat is nummer B, nadat hy hierdie afstand gehaard het, het allemaal in Zuid-Afrika van hom geweer. After he ran this distance, everybody in South Africa knew about him. Dan nummer 12, Lulani het nie saam met die ander at komrits atlete weggespring nie. Wat het Hain gedoen om Lulani te laat voel dat hy rechtig aan die komrits marathon deelgeneem het? So, um, Lulani did not start with the other contestants in the comrades marathon. What did Hein do to make Lulani feel as if he's really taking part in the comrades marathon? Hein hit a clunk op name uh, met Shoza Loza gespeel. Hy het Chariots of Fire gespeel. Hy het die Hoenraan wat kraai gespeel en hy het die wegspringskoot gespeel. So anything that tells us something about the sounds that was there, so the Shoza Loza that he played, or Chariots of Fire that he played, or the recording of a um, rooster that was crowing, or um, the wegspringskoot, meaning the... the, the um, the cue to, to start running. Anything similar to that is fine. Then, uh, you can also say, hy het saam met hom gedraf. He jogged with him, which meant that at least there was someone else running with him, which means he didn't feel like he was running the thing alone. There was someone else running with him. Then, wat er die worm past die beste by dit wat Tulani reg krijg? Which idiom fits the best with that which Lulani managed. Um, hoe meer haas, hoe beter spoed, so the more um, hurried you are, the better your speed is. Van lekker lach kom lekker heil, from laughing lekker, you cry lekker as well. En dan, dit was boosie viermaakplek, it was above his understanding of on our ven, he who persists wins. That is then obviously number D, ne? because he never gave up. Nummer 14. Waar in Durban het die 2018 Comrades Marathon geëindig? Where in um, Durban did the 2018 Comrades Marathon end? In the Moses Mabida Stadion. Again, stadion in D is not necessary. Um, I would prefer the stadion. Um, I was one of the people who did not agree with this in uh, 2019 when we went marking because you can't end in Moses Mabida, but you can end in Moses Mabida Stadium. Um, of course, there are people from Durban there as well who said, but that's what everyone talks about. Like we here in Hulokone talk about Peter Mokaba, we're going to Peter Mokaba, means the stadium, um, exactly the same thing, but yeah, Peter, uh, Moses Mabida then is acceptable. Twee op een volgende woorde uit paragraaf 10, wat aandui dat Hulani iets goeds vir ander mense wil doen. So give two consecutive words from paragraph 10 that says Hulani wants to do something good for other people. Positieve Baidra, you see the uh is in there as well, okay? Um, it is mainly because of language structures. You can't just say positive baidra, you have to say a positive baidra. But it's unnecessary. If you have it in there, it's not the end of the world. You can still give yourself the mark. Uh, but you can't just have a positive, okay? Because a positive about. Then, will for good. Again, with or without quotation marks, both acceptable. Waaruit kan ons afleid dat die 2018 Comrades Marathon nie Lulani se laaste Comrades was nie? How can we or what can we deduce uh, from that the 2018 Comrades Marathon was not his last um, Comrades? Hy het beloof dat hy in 2019 weer gaan hardloop, so he promised that he will run again in 2019. The 2019 is in brackets, so it's unnecessary. 
en um, hy wil sy tyd verbeter of nog vinniger hardloop. It mentions there, he wants to improve his time, which tells us that he will have to run this again, otherwise how can he improve it? Dan nummer 17. Waarom kan een mens verstaan dat Lani nie een medaille in die Comrades Marathon ontvang het nie? Why can we understand that he did not receive a medal after finishing the marathon? Um, hy het nie die afstand binnen die 12 uur voltooi nie, so he had extra time, he didn't finish it within the 12 hours as is a prerequisite. Um, hulle maak nie uitsonderings vir gestemdes nie, they do not make um, exceptions for people with disabilities, if you want your medal, finish it in 12 hours, whether you are able-bodied or not. Alle atlete moet die selfde behandel word of aan die selfde vereistes voldoen. So all athletes have to be treated the same or have to um, complete the same prerequisites. Flani moet of het voor die ander atlete weggespring, he started before the other athletes, of hy het met een speciale verginning gehardlip. He ran with a special exception or exemption made for him. Any one or of the, the ones mentioned or something similar is also acceptable. Die titel, wat er titel? A, goedhartige sakeman, skenk kunstbeen of B, van bedel vir geld tot komreds held, pas die beste by hierdie artikel, motiveer jou kese. So, here they ask you, which one of the following um, fits best, or of which one of the following titles rather, um, fits best with the content of the article. A uh, good-hearted businessman um, gives a artificial leg or from begging for money to a comrade's hero. Which one fits the best? And you have to say why. So obviously it is from begging for money to a comrade's hero Van Bedel vir geld tot a comrades hero, a geld um, is the best one. Why? Want it som die leestuk goed op. It summarizes what the article is about. Dit sê precies waar die leestuk handel. It tells us exactly what the passage is about. Dit die aan of die story oor Glulani, of dit die aan dat die story oor Glulani handel, wat eers vir geld moes bedel, om aan die lewe te bly en toe sy lewe so veranre dat hy die comrades kon voltooi. So it indicates that the story is about Lulani who first started begging for money um, to stay alive and then later changed his life so much that he completed the comrades. Now, one can argue that none of this would be possible without the businessman, okay? Which is completely and utterly true. But, the majority of the article is not about Hein, it is about Lonnie. Therefore, we cannot accept A, we can only accept B. Also, please note that you have to motivate. Hierdie vraag tel een punt. This question counts one mark, which means that part, hierdie gedeelte, tel nie die punt nie. Slechts die verduideliking only the explanation on why you chose that will count the mark. So please keep that in mind. Good. Now we go to the spot print to the cartoon text B. Now, in general, this was a difficult text because there are quite a few things that is you need to really think carefully in this one. Um, if I can describe the picture, we have a picture of a family on the beach. We've got Granny there under her little blanket with her tea, sitting next to Mommy who's reading a magazine. Uh, then we have the two kitties on the left-hand side, the one playing with um, buckets and spades and things on the beach, and the, uh, and the boy with his hat asking his dad something, and his dad is sitting there on a desk chair with his briefcase, his laptop, and everything um, on the beach. Good. So, the daddy, Sprakborrel Ian, says, A sandkasteelbouw, seker leuk, 
Hoe pas donderdag om 9 uur jou? So, building a sandcastle, surely, how, um, or what does your agenda look like for Thursday 9 o'clock? In Sprakborrel 2 year, the mother speaks to Granny and she says, Ma, Jan sikkel mos maar altyd om af te skakel. So, mother, Jan always struggles to, sh to switch off. And then at the bottom there's this tiny little creature, Sprakborrel 3, that says, Intissen boe so lang on sy loobaan. In the meantime, he will be building on his career. So it's really not an easy um, cartoon to understand, but basically the humor is derived from the father sitting there on the beach like he is at the office, and when his son asks him to build a sandcastle, he says, sure, I'll build a sandcastle. I'm free on Thursday, 9 o'clock. Okay, so he's not really switching off from his business tactics. Okay, good. So, number 19, then, say, Ma Jan sikkel mos maar om af te skakel. Wat is die vergeerlijke betekenis van afskakel in spraakborrel 2? Afskakel in the, in the literal sense means to shut off, ne? or to put off, like skakel die TV af, switch off the TV, things like that. So in figurative meaning, what does it mean? This beteken om te ontspan, to relax, om sy werk by die huis te los, to leave his work at home, of om nie die hele tyd met werk bezig te wees, of aan werk te dink nie. Ne? So he shouldn't be thinking about his job the whole time, or be busy with his job the whole time. Sounds quite like teachers. Dan, nummer 19.2. Noem een manier waarom hierdie woorde van die vrou visueel uitgebeeld word. So you need to give one example or one way in which the woman's words is being expressed visually. In other words, wat kan jy sien wat inpas by wat die vrou sê? What can you see that fits in with what the woman says. In other words, that he is unable to relax. Hy het sy jylle kantoor, akte tas, skootrekenaar, dagbeplanner, kantoor, stoel, saamgebring, strand toe. So he brought his entire office, or everything that he needs to function um, in his job, he brought with to the beach. Die man is bezig met sy kantoorwerk, al is hy saam met sy gesin op die strand. So the man is busy with his office work even though he is on the beach with his family. Of die man kyk eers in sy dagboek, voor hy besluit wanneer ons saam met sy sien in sandkasteel te bouw. So the man looks in his um, day planner first, before he start, or he tells his son, okay, I can build a sandcastle with you. Then number 20, kies die correcte antwoord, uit die tussenhakies. Uit die jonger vrouse woorde, en houding, kan ons afleid dat sy Janse optrede aanvaar of bevraagteken. Aanvaar means to accept, bevraagteken means to question. So, from the younger woman's words and her attitude, we can see that she accepts Jan's actions rather than question them. Okay, so on far she accepts it because she's making an, an excuse. Now, ach ma, you know he struggles to relax. Ne? She's not saying, ja, nie, kijk nou weer daar. Ne? So she is not questioning it. She is accepting it. She's making an excuse for what he is doing. Dan nummer 21. Hoe kan ons sien dat die dochterkie haar nie aan haar pa steer nie? How can we see that the girl is really not interested in what her dad does, say sit in kant and spiel. So if you just said say spiel or say spiel alien, that's fine. Say sit met haar rug na haar pa toe. She sits with her back towards her father. Say bow op haar eie a sand kasteel. She's building a sand castle by herself. She's not asking daddy to help her. Die meeste mense in hierdie spotprint is gereed vir die typiese dag by die strand. So most people in this at, in the cartoon is ready for a typical day on the beach. Say why this statement is true. Sê waarom hierdie stelling waar is. So you need to give an example or examples rather of what people are doing, what people are saying, what people are wearing that makes them 
seem as if they are on the beach. Okay, or we'll say that they are ready for the beach. Hulle of die mense dra sonhoede, sonbrille of typische strand drag. Ne? So they are wearing sun hats, sunglasses or typical beach wear, meaning uh, 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 swimming costumes, those kinds of things. Men, uh, there's one little fat man there without a shirt, you can see that. Um, uh, the, the one lady there has like a bikini thing on, anything similar to that. Then you can also say hulle of die mense of die ma of die kinders het a son sambriel saamgebring. So they brought with a umbrella, a beach umbrella, um, strand speelgoed, beach toys. Remember it's not just the bucket and the spade in the background there as well. You can see there is uh, people playing with a ball so you can mention that as well. Of hulle het verversings, they have refreshments. Ne? Granny sitting there um, with her cup of tea or her cup of whatever. You can see the picnic basket there, the picnic mindy, anything similar to that. Dan nummer 23. Die paase werk is vir hom belangriker as om aandag aan sy kinders te gee. So the father's job is more important than giving attention to his children. Waarom is hier die afleiding correct? Why is this um, deduction correct? Die pa moet eers in sy dagboek kyk of hy tyd het om saam met sy sien een sandkasteel te bou. So the father needs to look in his diary first to see if he can spend time with his son. Die pa maak een vaste afspraak om saam met sy sienkie een sandkasteel te bou. So the dad has to make a concrete um, appointment with his son in order to build the sand castle. Die sienkie moet wag totdat sy pa tyd sal hee om saam met hom een sandkasteel te bou, specifically on Thursday at 9. So the boy has to wait until his dad has time to build a sand castle with him. In spraakborrel 3 word daar ook gesê dat die pa aan sy werk of sy loobaan bou. So in spraakborrel 3, the speech bubble 3 there at the bottom with that little weird character. It says that the dad um, is then working on his career in that time. Of die pa werk op sy rekenaar of komper. So anything about the dad busy working on his laptop is acceptable. Um, just FYI the last bullet. Die pa werk op sy rekenaar of komper. If you're going to say um, Laptop, that's not correct. They're not going to accept that. If you say computer with a K instead of a C, that is also not correct because computer with a K instead of a C has not been accepted into the Afrikaans language just yet. All right. So please uh, know the, the jargon. Rekenaar, skoot rekenaar. Komper is... Uh, it's colloquial language, all right? It's not something that is quite generally used, but it is acceptable. Good. Then we're moving on to the summary. And yeah, <laughs> this is an interesting one. Okay, so the, to the topic was about whom your tacky squint marks, so how to clean your sneakers or your whatever. Now it says, som 7 wenke oor hoom jou tekkie skoon te maak in jou eie woorde op. So summarize how to clean your tackies in 7 sentences. Okay? Um, very important it says wenke. So it has to be tips and tricks or um, hints or helpful ways in which to do this. Usually when you see the word wenke in Afrikaans, the first thing you think of is, I need to start with a verb. That is the biggest load of hoo-ha ever. Um, venke, or tips in this case, is anything that will make it easier for you to clean your tackies. All right? Um, so you need to make sure that it's not just a general statement of, mark it with a borsal squint. What type of brush? That's, that's basically what we're looking at. Not just soap, what kind of soap. Not just water, 
must it be hot must it be cold so when it comes to venka it has to be a lot more specific than just simply there you go all right so if we're going to do it the same as we did the previous one i'll read the first paragraph see if there's a fact and then we'll explain this one already you'll see there's one two three four five six paragraphs um, so we have six paragraphs, we're supposed to have seven facts, so there's a very big possibility that the first paragraph will have a fact, okay? But we'll read it, and then we'll see if there is one. If not, then we know one of the other paragraphs will have two facts in it. Takkies is baie gewild onder oud en jong, dis belangrik om te weet hoe om jou takkies skoon te hou. Hier volg een paar wenke wat jou daarmee kan help. So, none of these things is a tip. Um, tackies is by gewild, tackies are very popular, uh, belangrik om te weet om jou tackies skoon te hou, important to know how to clean them, none of that is a fact, and then the next sentence says, here are a few um, tips on how to clean your tackies, so obviously it's not a fact. Second paragraph then says, as jou tackies by veil is, kan jy begin dier eerst die ergste veilheid met a borselkie af te borsel. Dan is dit makkelijker om die tackies te was. So if your tackies are clean or dirty, it is good to start by getting the worst of it off with a brush. Afterborsel is the most important thing here. So dust or borsel die erste vuilheid af, get the worst of it off with a brush. Second paragraph is like a long, so we know we're going to have a lot of facts from there, okay? So, it says, Moe nie sommer enige skoonmaakmiddel op jou tackies gebruik nie, want as, die, as dit te sterk is, gaan het jou tackies beskadig. Seep in a bottle, vloeibare seep, wat vir hande was gebruik kan word, werk baie goed om op die meeste tackies. Jy moet die vloeibare seep wat jy gebruik eers op een klein deelkie van die tekkie stoets, so dat jy seker maak dat die seep nie die tekkies beskadig nie. So first of all, don't use any cleaning product on your shoes. Moe nie enige skoonmaakmiddel op jou tekkies gebruik nie. Vloeibare seep wat vir hande was gebruik word, um, werk baie goed. So anything about vloeibare hande seep, that's fine. Dan, jy moet die vloeibare seep wat jy gebruik op een klein deelkie van jou tekkie toets. So those three facts come from paragraph 2. So first of all, don't use any cleaning product. Um, liquid hand soap works well. And then test on a part of your tackies first. Then the next one says, Vryf die mengsel. Van lou warm water in die seep met een lappie oor die tekkies. Vir plekke wat moeilik is om by uit te kom, byvoorbeeld die binnenkant van die tekkies, kan jy een tandenborsel gebruik met die, en die tekkies sachies daarmee skrop. So two facts again here. Rub the mixture of lukewarm water and soap on the tekkies. Okay, so again, anything that tells me that the mixture must be rubbed on the tacky, especially like I said, don't just tell me water, tell me what kind of water, low warm water, lukewarm water. If you just said the mengsel, um, you're not necessarily going to get the mark, because which mixture? Must you mix the mud with the soap? Must you mix the soap with something else? What must you mix it with? Okay, so again, be specific. Vir die plekke wat moeilik is om by uit te kom, kan jy tannenborsel gebruik, so moeilike plekke, nee, that's the most important thing, moeilike plekke, gebruik a tannenborsel, ok, so gebruik a tannenborsel, om die moeilike plekke te skop, sachies can be left out. Then, um, the next paragraph says, wanneer jy die tekkies klaar gewas het, kan jy dit met warm water afspoel, so again, um, rinse it with warm water, Water. Again, don't just tell me with water. Must the water be hot? Must it be cold? What must it be? Then the last sentence, that entire sentence basically, is a fact. Moet nooit jou tekkies in directe sonlig of hitte laat droog word nie. Maak dit altyd by kamertemperatuur droog. 
So you can use the negative one, never dry it in direct sunlight or dry it in room temperature. So maak jou tekkies by kamertemperatuur droog of moen jou tekkies in direct sonlig laat droog nie. Anything similar to that is acceptable and we got to a total of about 64 words um, for this one. Now guys, this summary was hectic. Because it's tips, we can't be general. We have to be super specific. All right? Um, and that does make it very difficult, especially to write it in your own words. If you get to a point where your summary is, I don't know what to do anymore, write it in the direct as it is in the text because you can lose only a maximum of three marks. All right? Um, try your best to keep it in your own words as far as possible, but if it's really impossible to do that, one or two um, quotes in the direct as it is, is not going to ruin your mark. All right. Goed, sterkte vir julle. Um, volgende week begin ons dan met die gedichte. Ek sal bykie van die gedichte met julle verduidelik. Julle het klaar die um, YouTube videos gekyk wat ek vir julle gestuur het, hoopelik, so ons gaan dan van daar af verder gaan met die gedichte, en dan daarna is dit Vila, goed, sien julle volgende week, bye!